Hello everyone, welcome back to Porky's Collectibles. Today we have another great video for you. Today we're gonna to be opening up one of these Evolving Sky booster boxes. But before we start, please like and subscribe to our channel and follow us on Instagram at Porky's Collectibles. Also make sure to check out our eBay page where we sell a lot of different Pokemon cards from time to time. So please check that out. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Today we're gonna to be opening up, like I said, Evolving Sky's booster box. This one right now is going for about $185. When I bought it, it was $100. So I'm gonna to try to see if we can pull any of the VMAXs, the alt art VMAXs in particular, because I have not pulled any of those. Preferably we want the Umbreon VMAX alt art, the Rayquaza, the Glaceon, uh, Leafeon and the Sylveon. Any of those will do, as well as some Vs as well. We need the Dragon Knights and the Rayquaza. I would really like those two. Umbreon as well, since I actually have not pulled that one. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Now it has been a long time since I actually posted a video for various reasons. Uh, my wife did give uh, birth to our child Caspian not that long ago. Uh, well, it's been a while now. It's been about two months, but just finding time to really get through our uh, channel, our eBay page, also our Instagram is kind of tough as I struggle to open this box right now. Here we go. These boxes are going pretty high right now. Like I mentioned before, there is talks of a reprint. I believe there will be a reprint. So once that happens, I will be picking up more of these boxes. If they go for about $120, which I think, I don't think it's gonna ever go back down to 100 or below 100, but if it's at 120, I will still recommend people picking them up since this set has so many good cards in it. Now later down, I believe this, this set will be the most high, highly sought after set. Then Brilliant Stars will probably be a second for that. And then I think the Sleeper probably will be Fusion Strike. A lot of people don't really care for Fusion Strike, but Gengar and Espeon are in there. And those are two really good cards, as well as Mew. Uh, Battle Styles obviously is not the best, but there is some good cards in there and it's still really cheap if you want to pick those up. So let's go ahead and dig right into these packs here. Uh, I did open up another Evolving Skies booster box before this. Now, unfortunately, uh, I was unable to... There's a code card. Let me adjust for this. Unfortunately, I was unable to upload that uh, video for, because the video quality was really bad. But that was going to be our worst booster box opening ever since uh, I literally pulled three V Maxes and the rest were Vs. And that was the worst box I ever opened. I think all the ultra rares came out to be under $30 combined, which was really bad. Emoga, Rubat, Glossifer, you got a Feebas, we have a Galarian Moltres as a reverse, which is really nice, and then a Drampon non holographic. Now, for what we're going to do for pre uh, following videos, I, I am thinking about doing a video on submissions for PSA, what cards I originally was going to submit from 2020 to now, and if I've changed any of my uh, cards that I was thinking I was going to submit and removing them just because I don't think they're going to be that great to grade. Uh, grading cards for me are only for two reasons. Obviously, one of them is to increase the value when I'm selling them. Another one is for my own personal collection. So I will go over those as well once we do that video. Water energy, we got a scroll of dragons. We got that thing right there, Boulder. We got Flabebe, we got a Swablu. We have a Litleo, we have a Chinchow. We have a, oops blocking dino and then we got a dweeble as the reverse and then we got a florgus is our holographic rare put that on this side as well so there's been a lot of things going on uh hopefully we can post more cards for sale online soon there are i have stacks of cards that i still need to upload to our ebay page a lot of well, a lot of watsi hollows actually just been collecting those over the years i think uh i'm Willing to get rid of, you know, having 20 copies of a card is not necessary. So we'll see about that. There, oops, upside down code card. There you go. So we'll we'll see what we upload. Probably just maybe a maximum 20 cards a week if we can even get that. Maybe 10. We'll see what happens. Okay, dark energy. We got switching cups. Let me make this more focused. Tentacruel. We got a boulder. 
We got Slack Off. We got Patilly. We got a uh, Pikachu. Pumpkin Boo. Rufflets. Shopping Center Reverse. And we got a Flareon V Max. This is a really nice card. Any of the original evolutions are really cool. Flareon is my second favorite after Jolteon of the original three. Obviously, uh, Vaporeon I have less love for. Uh, but, you know, Vaporeon's pretty cool too. All right. Into the next pack. And there's some news for what's coming out. Astro Radiance coming out soon. Still going to do another video for the Brilliant Stars because I've... Oh, why am I doing upside down so much? There it is. There's a lot of cards that I've, I've only opened like, what, one box? So I have to open another one, try and go for any of the Charizards. I actually haven't pulled any of the Chase cards. I have pulled, I think, the Fire Energy, the, the Secret Rare. I can't, is that from Fusion Strike? I don't remember which one it was from. But there haven't been that many good pulls from it. There is the character rares as well. And I did pull the Sylveon VMAX one. Okay, love this is reverse. And then we got Gigalith non-holographic. That being said, I will be picking up more radio, uh, the Brilliant Stars once they come out and they drop below $100. I think that's another great set, especially since it is a Charizard set. Charizards are sought after. Now, me personally, I don't really care for Charizard in terms of collectability. I like Charizard, but it is... Sorry, turn it around. It is not my favorite Pokemon. Uh, Umbreon definitely is one of my favorite. Tranitar is another top favorite. Raichu as well. But it's all preferences. Charizards I collect just because they're Charizard. I... I bet a lot of people collect them just because he's Charizard. Uh, Ribbon Badge, Flaffy, we got a Braviary, we got a Mareep, Drowsy, we got a Scraggy, Phoebus, we have Hitmonchan, we got a nice Psyduck. Psyduck is a, I don't know why I really like Psyducks. The Psyduck guys are always cool and he always looks so derpy. And a Ludicolo Holographic. Now for Evolving Skies, there are going to be a lot of cards I hope I don't pull. It's not as bad as it sounds. Uh, just because they're so cheap, I'd rather just buy singles for. Obviously, um, you know, the Medicham, I already pulled that one. As well as the Derulagon V and the VMAX version of it. Those are cheap enough that I don't want to pull the alt arts up. I'd rather have other priorities to pull than that one. Even Golurk is not an ideal card to pull, so we'll see. Crustle, Moon, uh, Moon and Sun Badge, Toy Catcher, Lotad, Emoga, Wubat, Glossifer, Feebas, well, I'm seeing all the names correctly this time around, Scraggy, and then a Thievul. So that's pretty cool. I usually butcher the names. A lot of people... A lot of these cards are, you know, some newer Pokemon that I don't really know. So, you know, if you don't play the games or constantly open packs, it's hard for you to uh, save some of these names. At least for me it is. Okay, oops. It's hard time opening this pack. Here is the code card. Two, three, four. In terms of other videos in the future, definitely we're gonna do another top uh, Pokemon cards for a certain Pokemon. Last time we did Alakazam, definitely have to do other ones like Gengar. What well, other ones are good? Maybe the evolutions are really cool too, so we'll see about those. Uh, Wishy Washi is the reverse, and I got Dialga uh, holographic card. That being said, if you guys have any you know ideas of things you want to see like how we package our cards when we ship it out i probably will do a video about that how we ship our cards what to look out for when you're buying from ebay i had somebody that I actually purchased from recently that was for a pretty high dollar amounts that's shipped it 
and charged me $100 for shipping. And they only insured it, insured it for $500 when it cost $1,500. So the issue is that USPS lost the package and I'm trying to find it right now. If they can't find it, then, you know, oh, it looks like they're in pretty bad shape for those. If they can't find it, then I'm gonna, you know, say that I never received it because I never received it. And that guy's gonna be out $1,500 minus the $500 that he did insure because I did ask him. Okay, Treasure Energy, which is really unfortunate because, um, well, if it does show up, we'll show you what's in, in there. I'm kind of curious too. I only got a couple of pictures. This is like two giant binders of cards that I'm really looking forward to see what's inside just based off the initial 12 pictures there were. But the thing is about those is uh, you never know what you're gonna get. It's kind of a gamble. It's still better than those mystery boxes or packs that you see on eBay. And you see other YouTubers trying to open and see if they can get back their value. And if they can get back 60% of the value, then it's considered great. So I don't take risks for those. I'd rather buy some of the pre pre made ones from like Target and stuff, the mystery boxes. I know it's kind of bad, but I remember buying those when legendary treasures were in there, and now legendary legendary treasure booster packs are expensive. Probably like a hundred bucks a pop, maybe not, maybe like seventy five. I'm not quite sure how much they are right now, but if you in the long term, all the sets are worth something. So. Definitely want to hold on to things, even battle styles. I give it five years and I guarantee you it'll go up more than what it is. We got a Leafeon V. Oh, that's really cool. I like Leafeon. Uh, Leafeon Glaceon. Leafeon is my favorite. I don't know why. It's off topic, but you know, even in uh, other card games and stuff, I've always been, uh, what's that? Even Magic the Gathering white and green decks so leaf young is one of my favorites i think they did leaf young pretty well especially the artwork that they did with them especially the the v max one it's kind of cool the ones where he's kind of playing with those rolls of uh hey there's a code card all right so we haven't pulled anything that great other than the flareon v max and leaf v i think we're due for another one soon all right, Flying Dragon, Fletcher, what's it? Fletchinger, Fletchinger, Lantern, Mareep, Drowsy, the creepy creepy kid right there, Scraggy, Phoebus, Hitmonchan, we got a Skip Bloom, and then we got an Alteria Non-Holographic Rare. Right now is still a great time to buy a whole bunch of cards that you missed out. A lot of the vintage cards are going for cheap. Definitely, you can, I just saw for even base set, like fresh pulled cards. I mean, obviously they're not Charizards, like Magnetons and Polyraphs, which are the cheapest of the cheap, but you can get a freshly pulled one for like $20, which is insane how much a pack costs. There's the code card. One, two, three, four. Obviously I'm still trying to work on uh, all the master sets and lately it's just, I don't know. I haven't seen very many great deals, but then again, it's because I've been busy. Uh, raising a child the first couple months is difficult. Definitely more difficult for my wife because she has to wake up every two or three hours to feed him. Stoutland and we got a wishy-washy non-holographic. But just trying to get into a rhythm of, I don't know, back then a video a week. I know other people do multiple videos. But I'm not one of those super uh, centric types. I know you can tell by the my voice and when I pull something, I don't get super hyped up. I mean, if I pull the Umbreon V Max Altar, I mean, maybe I'll go a little bit crazy. Not crazy enough to accidentally cut it in half or anything, but we'll see. There's the code card. Hopefully this setup is a lot better too. Hopefully it's more crisp. We're trying to figure out how do we how we can do it because I have to comments on the quality of our videos and I'm trying to improve that. As you can see, uh, Shadow's 
on my fingers, but it can't be helped if my fingers were there. Lombre, C dots, Slack off, Flabebe, Curvana, Dweeble, Himonchan reverse, where you pull like a bunch of uh, Himonchans, and Lilligan non holographic. Non holographic. In terms of what's in uh, store for our channel later on, um, definitely gonna be doing more varieties and videos, hopefully, like how to organize your cards. Uh, I already did a video way back when I did um, how to store your cards, but I might wanna update that. How to display your cards, what are good things to invest in, what are not good things to invest in, where, which which ones are safe things to invest in. Just like in stocks, of course, all of it is my opinion. Um, I invest in things I like, and that's the only thing you should do is invest in things you like. There is no sure um, bet or sure thing to buy that you will guarantee uh, anything. But that being said, pretty much uh, any Pokemon product in the long run has gone up. Some obviously have not gone up a lot, even if they're very old. Um, if you were thinking older theme decks and stuff, depending on which ones. But even packs, some of the packs are just Rebel Clash and stuff. I mean, that's not really old, but that one is definitely not worth as much as other cards. I mean, other uh, sets or packs. But eventually everything does go up and who knows, maybe everyone thinks that Battle Styles is trash and, or you know, Rebel Clash is trash and nobody wants to buy any. So they all, you know, disappear and no one buys them. And later on, since there's a flood of evolving skies, um, Battle, Battle Styles goes up, who knows? I mean, they're, if you buy them in bulk, you probably for like 250 a pack. So, you get them for 250 a pack later on if they're even double that price you already made double profit in within five years but obviously in my opinion well not obviously in my opinion i don't think it's going to only double so if a pack is 250 now that you buy it and then five years from now i'm gonna say at least minimum 10 bucks a, a pack because it's just five years old and there's gonna be so many different uh sets that came out in between let me see maybe like that there we go so then there's less of a shadow on the cards Amoga, let me focus this a little bit more over there. Tentacool, Pumpkin Boo, I got Bagon, Love Disc, Vigoroth is the reverse, and we got a Moltres, oh, Galarian Moltres holographic card. So we're two, um, not very many good pulls yet. Now, obviously, there's other cards I don't want to pull from this set as Garbodor. Garbodor, I, if you saw my video where I said it at the worst booster box opening for Evolving Skies, I pulled two Garbodors, which is pretty impressive. But the one that you didn't see on video, that was absolutely the worst box. There's a code card. For this box, I really want a VMAX, but I'll take a V alt art that is an Umbreon or a Dragonite or a Rayquaza. I really like the Rayquaza and Dragonite. I don't know why, I just like the Rayquaza, how he encompasses the whole card. Not the whole card, but the whole picture itself. All right, here, here we go. We have Burnmite, we got another Drowsy, we have a Lotad, and we have a Rayquaza VMAX Rainbow Rare. This, I have not pulled. Rayquaza is definitely a great card to pull. This box is already way better than the previous box. Let's watch him in all his shininess. This is a really great card for me to pull. I have not pulled this card. We will add this towards our collection to complete our master set. Obviously, it's pretty much impossible to open up a whole bunch of packs to complete a master set especially since how many cards there are in evolving skies i think if you, even if you open a thousand packs you wouldn't even get the whole thing i remember they did a what is that you know the other youtubers i opened five thousand booster packs or something and they like got or like barely got or didn't get a complete master set so 
Not to mention all the reverse rares and everything. And you only get 36 reverse rares in a booster box, so it's hard to say. All right, Psychic Energy, Subat, Digging Gloves, Stormy Mountains, Eevee, Cutie Fly, Pikachu, oh, I'm doing pretty good, Applin, Lillipop, Rubber Gloves, and a Seismitoad non-holographic. Now it is still possible to pull an alt art with a rainbow rare as you can see if you watched my previous video. If you haven't watched it, please go watch it. It's uh, my last Evolving Skies booster box opening. Obviously uh, it could have been a little bit better, but no complaints because uh, it's still fun to open up these boxes, especially Evolving Skies, just because there's so many things you can pull. Uh, I don't plan on Eve, like opening Vivid Voltage or Darkness of Blaze because Darkness of Blaze has just the chars that I really want. And even then you can just go buy it, it's cheap. Uh, Vivid Voltage, the Rainbow Rare Pikachu, that, that's that, the VMAX one, that's the only one that matters. And odds of pulling that are like one, what, like a thousand something, so you're not gonna be able to pull it. Now, those are easier just to buy the cards. For Evolving Skies, I don't want to pay three to four hundred dollars for Umbreon VMAX Alt Art. And when it's later on, the box could be a hundred dollars. I'd rather buy three boxes. I know it's kind of like a lot of gambling, but it's worth it. It's one of the few boxes that you can actually make more opening it than keeping it sealed, at least for now. And a Milo Technon Holographic. As time goes on, um, each box becomes, it's impossible, it's not, like, it's not impossible. It's seemingly rare to have you open up a box and make more than what the box is worth itself, sealed. Good examples are any of the Watsi ones. Even if you were to open up a first edition base set Shadowless box, you would have to pull the first edition Charizard. Uh, hope it's a PSA 10 because the PSA 9 will not cover the box because the PSA 9 is what, like maybe 50,000 or something. Hope you get that or pull all three starters. And even then, if you get them on PSA 9, they still would have come out to be how much what the box is worth. That can be said about almost every other box. Just like, let's see, X and Y Flash Fire, they're probably like two to $3,000 a box right now, if not higher. And the best card you can pull from that is the number 108 Secret Rare Charizard. That one in near mint condition is probably like $100 to $150. So there is no point to open it unless you want to just for fun. Or you can have a whole bunch of them. Zygarde is the holographic rare. So if you want to open up any booster box and not have it hurt your bank, Ultra Modern is the way to go. I never got into the Sun and Moon era, um, even though what the Cosmic Eclipse, the Team Up. I wish I had those boxes to open. There's so many cool cards from there. But at that time, I was not buying a lot of Pokemon products, was in the process of, you know, other things, house purchases, other financial needs. So, but now those boxers are, they're affordable still, like five, six hundred, maybe seven, eight hundred dollars. But I don't want to pay that price just because why would I try to buy that when I can buy five evolving skies in five years time, I know for sure that it will go up in price. So timing is key. Not everything's easy. Another uh, holographic. I got a lot of holographics in this box for some reason. Uh, slacking. It's not bad. I and mean, It's better than getting a green code card and just getting rares. But so far we're... I think it's six to eight ultra rares for our booster box. We're one side. We're, we're on track. We got three ultra rares. I'd rather go for quality over quantities. I'd rather not have like... 12 Vs. I'd rather have like one Alt Art, two V Maxes, and one Rainbow Rare over that. So we're kind of on track. 
there's the code card. One, two, three, four. But the market is always fluctuating. Uh, since it's gone up to about almost $200 for a volume size booster box, I believe Pokemon, they're not done with it because it's still in rotation. This uh, set is so popular, they're gonna give a reprint at one point. Now, how big of a reprint? It's hard to say. Um, there, are, I've watched other YouTubers, uh, Pokemon and other YouTuber uh, YouTubers, sorry, have talked about how even Rattle talked about how their the uh, the printing company that they just bought. I forgot what is was it called? M MPG. The only reason I remember it, its name. Oh, got a Rayquaza V Max full art to match the rainbow one, but. Um, Millennial Printing Group, Millennium Printing Group. Um, so Pokemon bought, uh, International bought, bought that out. So they're gonna be printing cards there. So who knows, maybe there'll be faster reprints, more reprints. Of course, uh, that group prints other trading card games. If you want to get a more in-depth video about that whole thing, you can go watch the other you know channels. Rattle does a good job. Uh, Pokemon does a good job about it as well. So make sure to go check those, uh, check those out. So we're at four. The pull is not bad. Uh, out of they're all good cards. I haven't pulled like like I said, Garbodor or Golurk. Oops. So all the cards of are cards that are uh, sorry. All the Pokemon's are are cards that we want to pull. Bravery, we got Lucky Ice Pop, Ice Pop, Tentacruel, Petalily, Lily, Pikachu, Pumpkaboo, oops, jumping way far ahead, sorry. Rufflet, Lotad, we got an Eevee Reverse, that's cool. And then we got another Ulterior Non-Holographic Rare. Oof. Alright, let's just remove all the cards, I mean the packs from this box, leave it back here. I don't want it falling on the cards. Also, if you haven't checked out other videos that we have posted, I did open up the remainders of the heavy first edition Fossil Booster Packs. And I did pull one of the cards I really wanted to pull from that, so make sure to check that out. I wish I had more packs to open. I needed to pull one more card from that set to be really happy, but the card I did pull, uh, if you go watch the video, you'll, you'll understand. All right, Leaf Energy, we got a Gold Duck, a Boost Shake, Rabombi, we got a Tender Cool. Try not to shake my hands. For some reason, it's pretty hard. We got a Dino, we got a Mareep, we have a Wobbuffet, we got a Fanged Dragon, Scroll of the Fanged Dragon. And then we got Smeargle, non holographic. Smeargle, holographic. What's the card that I remember was from what? Neo. Neo Discovery? Neo Revelations? I'm trying to remember which set he was in. Obviously, not one of the cards you want to pull from there. There's always. If you're investing in Pokemon, make sure you invest in. Well, obviously, like I mentioned before, cards you like. It doesn't even matter how heavy your Pokemon. I really love the. Viridian Forest uh, Secret Rare. That is one, I have like 20 copies of those. At, which one is that one from? Cosmic Clips maybe? I don't remember which set that's from. But obviously there's Pokemon you should invest, just like Charizard, Blastoise, Venusaur, any of the starters, any of the Umbreon, Gengars, any of the, the fan favorite Pokemon you should always invest in. If you don't know what to invest in. Obviously, there are going to be niches for different cards. Like, I wouldn't invest in a whole bunch of Hippodons, Drowsies, Scraggy, Feebas. I don't think there's any card that's worth anything. Hitmonchan, you can... There's some earlier Watsy cards. The EX Team Rocket ones. Um, base sets. Those are all really good. Chinchow, I don't see it going anything really high. Alteria does have uh, good cars that are worth a good amount of money and have good artworks. Alteria EX, <sighs> Unseen Forces maybe? I'm trying to remember where, there's multiple Alteria EXs. 
There's even a Delta Species one, if I remember correctly. Let's just go through this pack and I'll go through cards that I personally, part, my opinion, cards that I recommend you invest in and cards you don't invest in. But of course, in my opinion, don't listen to me. Just follow, follow your heart, follow what you like to do. Then you can't really go wrong. Okay, uh, secret rare energies are cool. I think they're, I invest in them. They're really cool cards. They're underrated in my opinion. They're really cheap too. So those ones are good. I would not invest in Herdier. Herdier, Spirit Math would not. Nope, another no. Sable Eye is a very interesting Pokemon. I would say he's somewhere in the middle. I wouldn't really invest in him, but at the same time, there's some cool cards. The tag team one with him and Tyranitar is pretty cool. The alt art one is really cool. So I recommend picking that up if you can find a cheap copy. Teddy is a no. Mareep is a no. Flaffy, the secret gold card. I recommend that one's actually a pretty cool card. So I recommend that one. I don't recommend him. Raichus are always a cool card to uh, choose. The Vol form of Pikachu, which is the mascot of Pokemon. This is a card that I find that most people would really like. Entei's are really good too because he's a legendary Pokemon. Entei, especially the gold stars or EXs from the EX era. Sorry, just dropped the card. Those cards are always uh, pretty sought after. It's one of the three legendary dogs. Um, I wouldn't call them legendary cats. Some people get them confused. I'm trying to think what are, what are the three legendary cats. I, think of, I don't know. This always coming up with threes of legendaries. One, two, three, four. Now we're just missing what an alt art. Alt art will complete this. Subat, I don't recommend. Lombre, I don't recommend. I don't recommend really any trainers unless they're actual trainers, waifu trainers. Those ones, people have a following. Personally, I don't really care for them. But then again, people do, um, you know, to each their own. I don't think they're bad cards. Dweeble, Mareep, still no. Shift Tree is somewhere in the middle. I don't really care for them that much. Talon Flame is not something that I, I recommend investing in just because there are no cards that I believe are over like $10. I don't think they will unless they, even if they made an alt art out of it, there's some alt arts that are just not popular. As you can see in pricing, if you go to TCG and type in alt arts or on eBay, their cards are cheap. Um, Minicham, like I mentioned before, um, there are ones that are really cheap that I really like. Um, Blissey V, the all art. I believe that's a very underrated card. I picked up a whole bunch of copies when they were like $15 a piece. I was like, this is an alt art. I'm going to pick these up. Blissey is a cool card. The artwork is amazing, so I don't understand why no one picked them up. That's why I picked up a whole bunch of them. SQ, we got a skip loom. We got an elemental badge. If you're itching to buy Evolving Skies uh, product right now, you can still go on... Um, PokemonCenter.com, and they're actually selling the three-pack blisters. Uh, the one with the SQ, the Umbreon one I got on was sold out so fast. But they're going for $12.99, which is not bad for three packs and a promo card. Of course, you can always just buy the sleeved ones for $3.99 on, on that site. But, you know, to each their own. Or you can just wait out for ETBs or booster boxes to come back. Espeon V, not a bad V card, but I have like 12 of these. Uh, another thing is if you, uh, the Vivid Voltage ETBs and the uh, Darkness of Blaze ETBs, they're, they're back in print. I know it's a lot cheaper they, since they have the reprint. A lot of people are seeing them in Target and in Walmart. Uh, if you were to choose one of the two, I would go to Target. Target's selling for $39.99 for ETB for both of those. And Walmart is selling for $44.99. If for some reason they're charging $5 more, which I don't know why Walmart would do that, but it's the MSRP price for $39.99 and Target seems to have a better deal. Also, if you can't find it in stores, which I couldn't find at all, next, it's very convenient. Just go to Target.com. They have it there where you can just buy it online. You don't have to go look for them or anything. They're readily available. I already ordered it. Um, supposedly it's supposed to show up tomorrow or Wednesday. And if to do, if I'll show you, I'll do a quick video on those to show you um, what I got from Target. And it's just so much more trustworthy. Going on 
the Walmarts, uh, the Target, uh, dot com, Target dot com, online store is so much better than the uh, Walmart one. The Walmart one has so many third parties that I can't tell what is going on or figure out which products they're actually selling. And when I actually type in Pokemon just from like the site itself, the, they don't really sell any Pokemon products. They're always third party. Whereas the Target, online Target store, I was able to type in Pokemon cards and all the Pokemon products were out there online telling you if it was in stores, online only. It was super easy to navigate. Walmart just is a hot mess when it comes to that. So that's why I recommend if you haven't or you are unable to pick up, uh, what is it, the uh, Vivid Voltage or Darkness of Blaze ETBs, I recommend picking those up. I also pick up some of the Pikachu V ones, um, the ones with the Shining Fates uh, booster packs in it. They're also going for like, I think they're going for $19.99. I can't remember, but it's a good deal. Especially since when it first came out, they were going for like people were marking them up $29.99, $39.99. So if you waited, you know, patience. For most of the time waiting, you will get a way better deal. Of course, if you miss the timing, timing is important for everything. It's hard to say. So just don't FOMO about everything. Crystal Caves, I like the secret rare of this, if I can pull that one. Yeah, Tropius non-holographic. But just wait. Um, Pokemon's kind of been a little bit more predictable in terms of when they're going to drop products. I mean, exactly when they're going to pro drop products, probably no. But like, you know they're going to drop at least three waves of each item, unless it's a specialty set for some reason. But Battle Styles got, what, four waves, which is crazy. Everything else has gotten three waves already. So there's... Whenever you, something first comes out, if you're... In, not in a hurry or in you're investing in it, don't buy it right when it comes out. Wait to the second or third wave when it gets flooded to the point where everyone's trying to drop the products, especially when um, big stores have to get allocations and they get so much that they have to offload as fast as possible because of the amount of debt they get for the products. They say they had to take, I don't know, how many cases of... of Fusion Strike, and they're $200,000 in the red. So they got off as soon as possible. They might go a little bit negative, but they need to do that. Otherwise, if they don't take all the products, oh, I actually haven't pulled this card. Dragon, uh, Dragon Knight V, this is a really cool cool card. Um, yeah, I'm actually really happy about this card. Give me a second. I'm just admiring the card. But... They'll have to offload it because um, if they don't and they take less or they refuse to take it from the distributor, next time around, they're going to just go, well, you guys didn't take anything from us, so we're just not going to give you any more. Or we'll give you less. And when a nice set comes out, if you take products, if you, if you want to know more about this, you can always look at uh, Danny uh, Phantom's um, YouTube channel. He explains perfectly of, of how it works out where you have to take weird products products that nobody wants and you have to take a whole bunch of it and if you don't you know say goodbye to your distributors because they don't want to give you any more um product because you didn't want to grab stuff from them so opening up a store or you know trying to sell online is sometimes difficult a lot of why a lot of people are no longer in business at least a lot of scalpers and other people that open on those small stores. For me, we're focused more on selling the collections that I've had in the past. I've bought a whole bunch of things and then I sell them and I buy newer products and I'll sit on them. I'm able to sit on them. Uh, but eventually we we were thinking about it. We were gonna try to open on a brick and mortar store or online store and I would love to do that. Of course, you have to have the right amount of cash flow and everything else to start up. Pokemon is one of those things that I know about, but don't know about the retail side that much. And it will be an interesting ride to go through it and see what happens. But sometimes you, you got to realize, just like any other business, um, other businesses that I have been in, you never start off in the positive. You go red. You're going to work long hours. If you want to be your own boss, you have to do things to get through it. 
And once you get through it, once you get better at it, that's where you thrive. And everyone else that were trying to open up stores after the huge boom, they were just seeing, they're seeing all the green. They were seeing all the money come in that they got greedy and they couldn't self-sustain themselves. Um, it was bound to happen. I wouldn't say it was a bubble. It's just crazy retrace. Another right shoe. This is the holographic one. Really cool. It's really heavy retrace just because it's ridiculous how it jumped up a thousand, ten thousand percent. That's just not sustainable. It was bound to fail or fall back. Even when they fall back, I mean, they're still higher up. Even first edition, or let's just say Shining Charizard, when, I don't know, five years ago, I can pick up a copy for like uh, 200 bucks. A good condition, a really good condition, your main condition. Um, then 2020, 2021, it jumped up crazy amounts. Now it's like maybe down, if you want to find a good copy, five, six hundred dollars, maybe a little bit more. I haven't really looked at the prices for those just because, you know, I'm not planning on buying any of the, the vintage stuff unless I saw it on eBay or something where it was a really good deal and it came up. Just because they still went up, they still went up 200 percent, 300 percent. It's higher. I don't know why people complain like the sky's falling. Everything that I bought has gone up. Um, I bought something, you know, birthday Pikachu when I bought in 2016. Got it for like 20, 30 bucks, well, really cheap. And then now it's like a near mint copy, $150, $200. So I 10 x it. It's just patience and collecting cards you like. When I went to Japan, uh, what was it, 2019? Yeah, 2019. Um, yeah, that's March of March and April of 2019. I went there, picked up a uh, Mario, no, I didn't pick up, Luigi Pikachu in the screen promos. There were the, Mar the Luigi Pikachu was $35. Screen promos, the Pikachu were 10 bucks a pop. I would have picked up more, but I had a card I really wanted, which was the Eevee promo, the player club promo that I wanted that I ended up spending more money for. I spent up like $1,200 for that card. Actually, I didn't have to spend it. Um, my wife at that time, oh, I guess when we got engaged at that time, or girlfriend, she bought it for me, and I was very happy about it. It's what I wanted. Uh, and then I also picked up, was a CP, CP6, CP9, I forgot what it was, I think it's six. Uh, Charizard, uh, base Charizard from the, 20, uh, the 20th anniversary. I found that uh, Mandrake near mint condition for what? 200 yen, which was $2. So just knowing what to buy, I, I picked it up just because it was cool and it was two bucks and you know, and I flipped that last year for like a hundred bucks. So, you know, opportunity is always there. Obviously nowadays it's a lot harder to figure those out. Sorry, I'm making it all shaky again. Things are harder, more people are more aware Back then, you can get a lot more stuff. Oh, nice reverse Pikachu. And then we got a Statland, not holographic. But there are things that are still available for you to purchase, even if you don't know what to really purchase. Just do some research. Just watch. I mean, if there's a car you think is, is going to be worth a good amount of money, just look at the timeline of what the card was at when it first came out. Just trace the progress of the card. Um, even then, if you don't know, but you really like the card, go for it. But make sure you just don't overpay for things. Always double check. Uh, eBay, uh, your local card shop, other websites, TCG player. Just find the greatest deal. Obviously, in person is always my favorite, just because you can see the card in person and see all the defects. Because a lot of times you can't see anything, the very fine defects, unless you're there in person. Rubat, uh, we try on our eBay because uh, we take nice photos and also videos of higher end cards to show uh, any defects. Ugh, size not All right, so we're down to our last two packs. This has been a fairly long video. We're over 40 minutes already. Try to finish this up. And uh, next time around, we will talk about cards that I plan to grade, What I'm when I'm planning to grade them, and how many I'm planning to grade them because there is no more what is it membership bulk bulk subscription 
seven dollars a pop anymore. Right. Standard is what fifty dollars. Um, economy is supposed to come back in summer. Maybe twenty dollars a card. Uh, who knows? But if it can be twenty dollars a card, that'd be great. If not, then you know we'll see, and we'll talk about that kind of stuff. Rufflet, Rock and Roller. We got a Wobbuffet. We got a Hopip. We got a Zora. Wubat is reverse. And I got a Leafy on VMAX. It's probably going to be the last pull I get, or unless some magical thing happens, I get an alt art from that. But this hasn't been a really bad box. This Leafy on VMAX, like I said, I love Leafy on. So it's been pretty cool. We got the Leafy on V, the Leafy on VMAX. We got the Rayquaza VMAX, the Rayquaza VMAX uh, Secret Rare. And then we even got the Dragon Knight V full art. So this has not been a bad box. Now, in terms of could have been better? Of course. Could have pulled one of those VMAX alt arts. I swear I've opened like six boxes and more? More than six boxes? I don't know how many boxes I've opened up now. Pulled two V uh two alt art Vs. And um that's it. I would love to pull a VMAX. Maybe crazy luck, this is the last pack and happens. I highly doubt they put back to back. Ultra rares. Okay, water energy. Let me get nice and focused here. Hippodon, Tentacruel, Rubber Gloves, Rare Rufflet. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. I uh, definitely like ranting once in a while and a whole bunch of nonsense, but if there's any topics or things you want to discuss, make sure to you know, comment down below uh, so I can get suggestions for future videos. All right, final card here. We got a Tropius non-holographic. So womp womp, no alt art at all. But in terms of booster box, in terms of value, I don't think I hit the 100, but the amount of good cards, oh, let's, let's go over it really quickly before we end the video. Let's put it all together, go through it one more time, as clearly as possible. We got a Leafeon VMAX. We got the Leafeon V. Dragonite V Full Art. Full Art are always textured. If you were to see a Full Art that wasn't uh, textured, then it's not a real card. We got a Rayquaza V Max. Then we have the Flareon V Max. A lot of V Maxes. And then we got the Rainbow Rayquaza V Max. And that will do it. Hopefully, you enjoyed the video. I had a lot of fun opening this box. Uh, a lot of fun ranting about random things. Uh, hopefully, there's other things. I'll rant about next time but thanks for watching the video and we'll see you all next time thank you bye